And welcome back, everybody, to the Career Build series. So I've been a little bit burned out on Stormworks lately. And so uh, one thing I'd like to do is start over the Career Build series. I think it'll be kind of nice to get back to the basics. I think part of the issue is when you have too much money in game, it's kind of you lose a little bit of inspiration. So I thought this would be kind of cool. And then also for newer players, a lot of newer players coming in and trying to figure out how to make this work. And so I'm a big advocate for the career gameplay. So we'll uh, start this first episode of the new career build series for 2023. So let's go ahead and let's start by setting up the world here. And so this could be useful for players who are new. And so I'm using the same seed. You can enter in whatever seed you like. So if you like the seed, this will be uh, dictate where the islands are. So I'm using the same seed from the Cap Air series. I'm going to go career. Uh, I'm going to pick my starter base as starter base. I'm going to go into enable add-ons. Now, I, I saw a comment on Reddit earlier today about somebody, how do I shut off the tutorial? So we're going to go through all this. And so I see this a lot, people asking questions without ever really kind of searching the options here. No matter what game it is, you should always go through the options and customize the game how you want it. And so let's go ahead and go through there. So we have AI paths, so that's the pathing for vehicles. Default AI aircraft, anything you see with a cog here, you can click on it and it gives you more options. Like see this one, no cog, no more options. If it has a cog, it has more options. So, for example, if you have a potato PC, you might want to trim that down. If you have a little bit better, if you want more of a live world with more aircraft, you can make that bigger, and you can shut them off altogether as well. Default AI, I'll keep the AI count where it is. Default Arctic mission zones, I want Arctic mission zones. Uh, default building missions, I want. Default cargo containers, I want. Default creatures, I'm going to click on that. This is going to be like your deer, so we're going to keep that on. Default delivery zones, dock bollards. Elevators, I don't really want or need the elevators, and there's a reasonable chance those can cause some lag, so I'm going to shut those off. Default forest fire missions, unfortunately the game does not spawn its own forest fire missions, which sucks, but I'm going to leave it on anyway. Default landmarks will stay on, default mission zones will stay on, default mission locations, let's click on this. Again, see this? People always have an issues with this. If it has a cog, click on it. And they'll say, hey, I shut off natural disasters right here, default natural disasters, but I'm still getting natural disasters. Well, that's because you have this natural disasters mission ticked here. So untick it if you don't want natural disasters. Um, display timers, I want, they'll tell me how much time I have left for a mission. So it's going to be annoying if I go out in a slow boat and it takes me 20 minutes to get out to the mission and the mission only had 25 minutes left on it and then five minutes on my return trip the mission times out and I don't get the mission. So by having the timer on there, I know, okay, the mission's good for two hours. It's going to take me 40 minutes to do. I have plenty of time. Display reward tells me how much money I'm going to do that. Now, mission frequency we have here, mission base time and minutes. You can tune those as you like. Um, you can always sleep in a bed to advance mission. So that would be this option. Default mission transport locations, leave that on. Uh, missions arid zone. Default natural disasters. I'm going to shut this off. I'm also, when you shut it off, it should disable sirens, but I'm also just going to click that off and drag that down anyways. That's just going to help to make sure that I don't get any natural disasters. Don't want them. Default railway signals will be on um, in case we want to do any train stuff. I don't know if we will or not, but um, I'll leave it on so that we have it. Default resource storage, trading, mission zones, default tutorial. This is how you shut the tutorial off. Click that off and you do not have a tutorial. Default underwater mission zones. I'd like to do some of those. We'll leave those on. Default weapons AI. That's coming off. I don't want to fight enemy AI. As you can see, you could also click in there. It has a cog, and you could change the numbers. But as long as that's off, you won't have it. Um, saved. Saved are things that I've made. So I'm going to put my ADF system in there. So my ADFs are all my, um, my radio beacons. So those are all going on. And so I have some others that will not get on there. But those right there are all my ADFs. Those are all going on. There's nothing in the workshop I want. And so now we are ready to start. All right, so by setting your game up properly, that's really going to help you to have an enjoyable experience. And so I highly recommend that. So I'm already getting a little bit pumped to start playing Career Build Series. I'm, you know, I've just been kind of in a slump where I have a lot of free time now, unfortunately, and um, I've been kind of burned out and so part of it is I really like the early career gameplay 
where you really have to kind of scrounge resources and build some new vehicles and you know, I kind of feel as I get more advanced in the game, I want to build bigger, more elaborate stuff, and that takes a lot longer. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to go to the um, clothes. We just got an update with more clothes. And so I'm trying to think of what I want him to have here. So I'm going to go through. I'm just going to kind of make uh, dress him up. You know, he's not going to have a ton of stuff here. And I think a brown hat. Aviator glasses are good. Mask is no mask. Um, let's see. Clothes, pilot, life jacket, lab coat. Stethoscope straps. Let me see. Anything I want on him. I think we'll do some, uh, some suspenders here. Eh, kind of... Put some suspenders on this dude. I think that'll be kind of cool. Um, let's see. Extra clothes. We'll go to regular base clothes. So uh, you have a t-shirt, a tank top, long sleeves. Um, I think I'll do a t-shirt. Yeah, we'll do a black t-shirt, trousers. Um, let's kind of do these as kind of like khakis. There we go. Shoes, uh, we'll keep them as regular. We'll do like brown shoes there. Not a huge fan of this khaki color. Kinda. Let's just do brown pants, kind of like. That looks good. Yeah, I stopped doing that, dude. Uh, let's go ahead and complete that, and we'll load it into the world. All right, so we're in our new save, and the first thing I'm going to do is screw with the XML. <laughs> and so we're going to go ahead and save this, and this is going to be... Um, Career Build Series 23, Episode 1. All right, so that's saved. Now what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and show you guys. I have a tutorial on this already, and we'll go ahead and we'll go through, and I will show you how I put in the creative menu. And so what you want to do is you want to find where your uh, files are. I'm not going to go in and tell you where your files are. You can, you can look those up. It's in your Steam folder. Go through that. And so I want to go to my Saves folder. And so now I'm in my saves folder. As you can see, I have all my files. And so I'm going to go to one of my other saves. So I'm just going to go to career build series. Where are we at here? Here's uh, career build series ADF backup. I'm going to go to scene. And I do not. All right. And so what this does is this gives you, if you look here, I have some uh, extra stuff here. And so I actually did a tutorial on this you can go ahead and check that out on my youtube channel and it tells you how to add the creative menu into your game and so right here as you can see i have creative menu no clip true dev go to true cleanup vehicle all that respawning falls so i'm just gonna go ahead and copy creative menu true no clip true and i'll go ahead and copy that so i'll control c that and now i'm going to go back and i'm going to load up my the one i just made so career build series 23 episode one all right and we're going to click on the scene for that now let's look at the scene here under game mode settings you know we have day night length sunset clear flow true respawning fall so right here i'm just going to add that so Control v make a space and now we have creative menu true and no clip true if you want to change your money it's right there i'm going to leave it i want to have um you know, I want to have to, con you know, that's part of the thing that's fun for me with these career games is that actually having to go through and do that. So we're going to save that. Go back to the game here, and we'll load it up. And so this should now have the creative menu. I'll test it, make sure it works. And so what this will allow me to do is do things like no clip, uh, third-person camera. Uh, part of this I do, you know, I like first-person mostly. It's, it's much more immersive to me, but... It's tough, tough on you guys to watch it. It's easier to be able to do some third-person stuff. Just setting up my world, it's a lot harder. Transit somewhere for an hour or try to move somewhere for an hour. I can teleport as necessary. If something gets screwed up or we get a bug, I can work around it. So I enable the custom menu, and I recommend this for everybody. A game is not super fun when it's ultra frustrating. And I was just playing Tarkov, and I got frustrated, and I got off. And so I said, let's play some Stormworks. And so some things I can do here... If the wind is ridiculous, I can change that. I can go through here. We have vehicle damage. If if something, like, say there's a game glitch. A lot of people get super frustrated by game glitches. One of the reasons I don't is by turning on the custom menu, 
for example, if you're driving around on a train, they have some areas on there that can cause your vehicle to hit the ground and detonate, and it's very frustrating to people. Well, guess what? You know that's in the game. Instead of getting super frustrated about it, put in the bug report, click off vehicle damage, and now you can ride your train, and if it hits something on the ground, it won't blow up. Same thing with if I'm driving a land vehicle around, if I'm on the roads, driving a normal speed, sometimes it will hit an object and explode. And so I will often shut vehicle damage off so that that doesn't frustrate me. You know, if you have something that's causing you problems, uh, you can shut that off. If, you know, you're if you're like five feet away from your base and you run out of fuel, you can click on infinite fuel to get back. This really helps you cut down frustration. You know, and so I highly recommend uh, turning on the custom menu in your career game. All right, so let's go ahead, and we just got a mission, but I didn't really, wasn't paying attention. So let's go ahead, and let's zoom out. No, I didn't see what it said. It said, it popped me some message, but I wasn't paying attention. So we're back here, starting the career build series over again. And if we look at the map, we have very little money. We have about 20K. And so we are on a land base here, and so I'm going to start building another boat. So the last career build series was something like 232 episodes. And so I started with Rigeau, and so a lot of this is new, uh, this last patch, too. They redid the diesel pumps here. Um, you know, they uh, added these electricals so you could recharge things for free. So that's some neat stuff. So what we want to do is first let's look at the map and look at, look at where everything is oriented. So the beginner base always starts here. And so we need to kind of look at what we're what we can do for some money making. One is going to be missions. Just doing some standard missions. We actually have what is this here? And when creative menu is on, you get missions that are further away. Uh, some people don't like this. I, it doesn't bother me. If if I'm not getting missions where I want them, I'll just go sleep and get them to come through. So there's something on fire. We have nothing to take care of that. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, building right away, and I want to build a new small boat. Now, the last time I did the career build series, I built Rigio, which I wanted to have a boat that would last us a little bit longer. I think I'm going to do a different strategy this time, and this, I think, will allow me to build more uh, craft qu more quickly. And so instead of like having a craft like Rigio, I think we used for 100 episodes uh, last time. I'm going to try to not do that. I'm going to try to make some smaller little vehicles that I can use for a shorter period of time. And so we'll also use this a little bit of a tutorial uh, of how to um, do a little bit of a, a boat build here. So one of the things I do is I make a footprint of my boat. And I, I want this to be a small boat this time. Virgil was a little bit on the bigger side. I want this to be kind of smaller. And I don't want this to be super fast. I don't want this to have too much utility. I want to have to build another boat at some point, And I think that will be fun. All right, so first thing I like to do is, is I set the footprint. And so what I'm going to do, let me see how I want to do this. So I want, um, so I just laid a line. It's kind of setting me up for the length of the vehicle. And then I'm going to actually go and well, let's do wedges. And I don't need this boat to be fast. A lot of people, speed is everything. For me, it's not. Um, let's go ahead and let's add this. This is going to be kind of more like a tugboat. It's going to be a little bit on the um, fatter, slower side. Um, I kind of want that for this build. All right, and so one of the things that these career build series videos are going to be good for, too, is you'll be able to kind of see how the different systems work, and you follow along, and that was something people enjoyed uh, the first time. All right, so this is going to be kind of a chunky, uh, slow boat, kind of, you know, kind of thinking of building it more like a tugboat. All right, and so... Oh, and so let's go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and drag. We'll do a flat stern. Probably it's a little bit um, narrow, but or it's a little bit short. Let's go a little bit longer there, oh, right about there maybe. All right, so there's our length on our boat. And we'll we'll clean it up a little bit. So this is how I tend to start to build my craft is uh, my boats is I start with kind of a um, Kind of a flat surface. This is a little bit square than I like. I'm going to start cutting this in. I'm trying to think if I... I don't think I want fours. Um, let me try something here and see how I like it. Probably fours are going to be tough. Um, so let's redo some of this here. And so what I do is I start with making a flat deck as my beginning of my boat. 
And so I'm just going to delete that. And I actually want to do, let's do wedges again. Again, this is not going to be a speed boat. This is going to be a multi-purpose kind of slow boat. I don't, you know, speed's not everything to me. For a lot of people, it is. For me, it is certainly not. Um, speed really doesn't matter to me all that much. You know, I, I have patience. I can wait. I can, I'm happy to go put on, um, you know, YouTube and let the boat kind of cruise. I'm happy to do that. I know a lot of people, they complain that if you have to get out of game, it's not good gameplay. Well, for you, it might not be. For me, I like simulator games. For me, that is perfect gameplay is, you know, um, you know, putting it on YouTube and, and gently, you know, motoring around a boat is very relaxing to me. I know for a lot of people that is antithetical to gameplay to them. They need constant action. That's fine. That's just not me. I can uh, kind of I enjoy the relaxing element of it. All right, so this is coming along nicely, so. All right, so one of the things, I'm building it pretty fat, and part of the reason I'm doing that is that will help with buoyancy, that will help with stability and floating and all that. And so uh, by doing that early and properly, we can uh, kind of foresee some of the problems. Next thing I'm going to do is pyramids. All right, so we have the flat deck, as you can see. We have the deck of our boat. Um, Let's see. So I'm going to actually probably cut it here. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm kind of looking at the width to the length, and I can kind of eyeball in it of how it is. You 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 know, for all the complaints people have about the physics in game, you can actually do a pretty good job of uh, if you use realistic numbers uh, for length to beam ratios. Those will help you. All right. So there I just did. I think. So there I just did two by fours. And so now I have a one. And so that's going to be a one by four. So I just find a one by four. Um, these can be kind of challenging to kind of figure it out. And then so that is going to be some twos there. So I need some um, two by fours here. Uh, if I can hit the right button, we'll be in good shape. There we go. All right. So I want to go here and then drag that in. That's my hull. So I'm kind of building a larger hull on this vehicle. Um, again, I want this to be kind of like a fat tugboat. That's kind of what I'm looking for. That's just stylistically what I'm doing. Uh, Rigio was faster last time. I want to build this. And so I want to do fewer jack-of-all-trades, master of nuns. And I want vehicles that specifically do one thing. And then that will give me a reason, an excuse to go build something else later. All right, so we have our one, we have our four by fours now. So let's go to some by twos. So now I need a two by two here, and so this will help us start to kind of curve the bottom of the boat in. All right, and so here, this is this confuses a lot of people of how to integrate these. When you get to this point, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna leave it. Um, for a second, and I'll get after it in a second. So let's go ahead. I'm going to grab these uh, two by fours here. All right, and we'll drag that. All right, now how to fill these? So what we're going to do is going to do one buys here. These are one by inverse pyramids here. And as you can see, that fills that section in there. And then we can... I can get it to rotate properly, and then we'll drag that across, and as you can see, that fills it in there. All right, and then because that's a one by two, we need a one by two wedge. So again, I tend to count the blocks before I click them. That's nice there. All right, and then I'm going to grab the inverse pyramid here, and this will finish this section up right there. Grab the inverse pyramid here, same thing. Uh, actually, we we want uh, we have to do this. Now we we'll drag that in there, and now we're on to flat sides. Don't really want to have one by twos all the way down. I might. Yeah, I don't want to have a two. Let's try some one by two wedges. Sometimes the one by two wedges on the sides can be a pain. Sometimes they're all right. So let's try them, see what we can do. We'll start going like that. They'll start to integrate the bottom of the boat. All right, so now, so we went from uh, fours to twos. Now let's go down to ones. 
All right, so right here, we're going to need to go a one by one wedge. And we'll grab this one by pyramid here. All right, and then we have uh, two by one. So we're going to find a two by one pyramid. So until you kind of get the hang of it, counting actually helps a little bit. Count out what you need. So this is a four by one. So you should need, you know, you need a four by one. And do I have a four by one? Yep, I just grab one. So. All right, there's a four by one. Here's another four by one. Oh, just undo it and grab it again. All right, there we go. And now we're down to uh, one by wedges. So curve the bottom of the boat a little bit more. And I think that is going to be the base layer. I don't want this heavy to go down too much. Eh, you know what? Let's do one more. I'm trying to see the height. You know, the character is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tall. So this is a, the height of a character here. So let's go one layer down. Scale is very hard to see, especially in the beginner base because it's so small. Uh, scale is hard to see in game or in the editor. And so you kind of have to things will, will seem bigger than they really are. All right, so that's good there. And then we'll do another one by here. And you, it ten, you tend to like to have a nice uh, flat bottom on these boats. All right, and we're going to finish the middle section there, and we'll finish all the way out to the back here. All right, good. So now that is kind of the beginnings of my boat. So we'll move it forward all the way down. If you bring in the world view here, you can actually see where the water is. And so we're going to dictate where we want my water line to be. So I'm thinking somewhere like there. And so I'm going to paint just a pink block here where I want that water line right there. That can all go underwater. That could go above. And so we'll kind of figure for that. Next, I need to build a transom. Transom is the back section here above where the engines are. Now I'm going to do some cool engines. I'm going to do an ASD tug. Those have fully rotational auto azipods. That's just kind of what I want to do for that. So I'm going to block out the back here. All right, and so I'm going to start coming up and integrating into a transom and then have azipods. This can be challenging, especially because I the way I did this I don't want, quite want that. So I want them longer. So what I can do here is let's try one by fours. These might be excessively long, but let's see. That's not bad. And so let's see. I'm going to go up. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't have much length on this this bench here. Try this. So I'm trying to kind of visualize this. Let's try one by twos. We really could use some one by threes. That's something that the community has really been asking for. All right, and then this is where integration can get tough going from different sizes, like right here. So what you want to do is you want to cut these, and then you want to get a um, two by what or is two by two. So two by two, and that, as you can see, goes in. And then we'll grab another one of these. And sometimes the drag is tough. All right, so that's going to go in and up for transom. Kind of trying to decide if I... I don't want it to go in, really. I want it to be a flat back on this boat, so... Let me see how I want to do this. We can start it abruptly. So what one thing I you often want to do is, you know, if you look at some stuff from real life, that really helps you kind of visualize and it just looks right because it is right because that's what, you know, real life has. So here's an ASD tug to kind of show you. So it has a gently sloping up rear with some azipods there. It's kind of what I'm looking for. So I want to do a more gentle slope up. Um, so let's kind of consider here's a side view of one. This is going to be a small picture or something terrible. Um, this is one I've actually built this daemon to 111. 
So a little bit more of a slope on there. So let's kind of use that. So again, I often like to use uh, real life examples to help me. This is going to be small though. So that's kind of, um, I need the buoyancy so I can't go too high on this. So let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's see. So, you know, the main thing is I need to be able to put those azipods in. And that's something to consider. So let's try to start bringing this up here. I don't want to go in. That's that's part of the problem here. I could go in there and then I'm trying to think. That's tough to think. <laughs> Let's try one by fours to start with here. These integrations can be tough sometimes to get them exactly how you want them. Let's do two by fours here. You know, all this is underwater too. Like, you know, I I still like my stuff to look pretty good, and so it's it can be tough to get them to look just right. You know, even the hidden areas I tend to like to have look pretty nice, so that eh, can be kind of challenging. All right, so I'm starting to get the hang of what I'm looking for here. I think these 1x4 is going to help, and then kind of just do a flattened out section for where the azipods are going to go. This can be tough trying to make these sometimes. You have to look just in the right spot to get them to, to, uh, to grab here. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. Reach, 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 reach. There's a trick to do it. Um, I could do, but I'll just go down. There we go. Yeah, we'll go down on there. You just have to find the right spot where they drag. It's It, it can be ultimately pretty frustrating. All right, now if we look at the side here, this is going to be the slope angle like that. All right, so I need some wedges, one by four wedges here. So doing a little bit more of a tugboat, you know, I, I really love tugboats. I don't have a tiny little tugboat, so I'm kind of thinking, you know, what did I want out of a vehicle? And that was something I decided, you know, so I want a tiny little tugboat. And especially, you know, with the career, with career um, it's nice to be able to have, it's nice to be able to have, I'm standing by, I'm trying to do pyramid, I'm typing a wedge. There we go. Yeah, especially with these building things, I like to have some simpler projects to work on. That's one of the reasons why I want to start over the career build series was, you know, I'm getting super complex projects and they take forever to build. This will be hopefully a little bit quicker and easier to build. Okay, I don't want to really come in more. I'm trying to think I might. I'm trying to think how I want to do this. It's not bad where it's at now. The problem is I have to think of how the azipod is going to work, and this can be challenging. This is going to have kind of an old school tugboat stern on it. All right, like that, I'm thinking. All right. So this, can, this is going to be problematic to try to get some azipods in here, but um, I think we'll be able to conquer it. It's just going to be tough. What I could do is I can widen this a little bit. I'm trying to think of the best way to widen this, but um, I'll play with it, see what we can get here. Hopefully we can kind of get this where I want it to be. Ah, come on. Kind of my build method is I really want to get the... 
really want to get the hull laid down uh, and make sure everything functions properly. I'm a very much a, you know, form and function are both important, but, you know, if you don't have the function functioning correctly in game, you, it's going to just cause you problems. For example, if it doesn't float right, if it doesn't dr drive correctly, you start to run into a ton of problems. So it tends to be one of the first things I want to do is get something up and running and make sure it's going to work. Um, if it's not going to work, then you need to start over, frankly, you know, and, and try to get it to work. And so it's important to make sure it works early. You know, some people will go right into the artistic elements of it, make it look pretty, and then it doesn't work and it's ultra frustrating. Or you really love an artistic element of it and it just doesn't work and you have to completely change it and it can be very frustrating where... Um, if you get it to function properly, then you can kind of get into that stuff. All right, so I'm going to have to cut the transom up a little bit earlier, I think, just to get these azipods in. So it's going to be a little bit of a fat pig, um, but that's that's how these tugboats are. You know, a tugboat is, is, is kind of a more of a squared off kind of bulky vehicle. It's not a super trim vehicle, you know. A little bit more on the boxy side. There we go. So now we have a more squared off transom here. That wasn't too painful. All right. Um, I could probably. I'm gonna cut this out here and continue this. There we go. And eventually I'll have to integrate that. But you know, so it's important to get a float test in here. That's going to be a big element of this, is making sure this floats properly. Because the buoyancy in game, um, you know, there are endless complaints about the buoyancy in game. It's not it's not that bad. It's just, you just need to understand it's how it works, uh, tricks how to, how to make it work. The, the larger the air volume you can have, essentially the more air in this enclosed space. I have a bunch of tutorials on that. You can check into those if you like. Um, it helps with floating. All right, so center of gravity is right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to put up a rail um, on this. Again, this is a tugboat. So it's it's going to look boxy. That's kind of its point. It's going to have a three-high wall on there. I'm going to put facets and all sorts of cool design elements on here. Um, but that will come later. Again, uh, very much for me, it's going to be function over form. It needs to work first. Once it's working, I can worry about how it looks after that. All right. All right, so here's the wall. Our character is seven tall, so this is just short of half of the um, height of the character. And that will keep, this is a good height for keeping them from falling off as they're walking around. We can do some more dressing in the rear here, but um, I'm happy to square it off for now. All right, so that is my kind of the wall around. Let's go. Just finishing some of this interior detailing here because I want to do a float test, and I like to get to that as soon as possible. The faster I can get to a float test, the uh, more quickly I can determine, is this even going to work? And so that's very important to me to get that checked out and making sure that it will float or it will not. So we should have the space for the azipods. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do a float test. Let's check. Let's lower it in the water. And then spawn it. Frustrated. Now, see it's sitting super high? We want that. See how it's rolling over? That's not a problem. All right. And all this is not a problem because there's no weight in this craft. There are no engines. There's no ballast. There's no fuel. There's no superstructure. All we have is a hull. And this is actually a good test. This is what I want. You always want to build your boats so they have excess buoyancy. And then you want to weight them. And then that weight's going to be traded out for things that are naturally heavy, like your engines. 
All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a water line. Where do I want this? Now, it tends to be right before the curve. So let's. I'm going to use a black line. I'm going to paint my water line. So this is where my intended water line is. This is where I want my water line to be. All right. And so if I know where I want my water line, to, I didn't have symmetry on. Um, if I know where I want my water line to be, I can then kind of plan to try to get it there. And again, not all plans work out, but um, we're going to try it. All right, so that's my intended water line. Next thing I like to do is, this is my center of gravity, this pink block. And I'm going to stick a pink block right at the center of gravity, right where it's sitting. Now, dynamics of how a ship works. So right now, let's count our blocks. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So right now, we have six blocks below the water line, and we have five blocks above the water line. And you saw how the boat tipped over, all right? So the center of gravity is right in the middle. So the boat is going to be able, is going to, if you drew a long line through our where our water line is, the boat's going to want to rotate on that because the center of gravity is almost right in the middle. As we drag the center of gravity down, it's going to be more likely to be stable and the boat to stay upright. All right. So the next step I tend to do is I start to weight the vehicle. And so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out all of this regular square in the bottom here. Um, I don't want to do one set of them right there, I think, is where I'm going to finish it right there. Uh, okay, and I want to not cut out my wedges here. All right, so we'll go like that. All right, so all this open area here, I'm going to add weight blocks. And as we put in things like engines... That's going to replace our weight blocks. We can get rid of some weight blocks. All right, now, right now you see where the water, so this was where the center of gravity was. So let's go undo. You see where the center of gravity is. Now let's do redo, and you see now the center of gravity is below the water line. So it's like a pendulum, right? The further down the, the weight is on the pendulum, the more likely it's to stay upright. The higher it is, the higher up it is, the more likely it's to rotate. So that's part of your stability issues or part of your stability planning. Let's put it that way. All right, so let's go in here. And so we have that in. And I'm actually going to add another set of weight blocks. Um, again, I'm doing testing here. And this is all part of my tests. And so, again, for me, function over form is the most important thing. Uh, because if it doesn't function, what, what am I even bothering with? I don't want to make something pretty that just sits in the workshop and can never be used. I want to make something that functions and does what I want and is also pretty. So as you can see, we dragged it down even more. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to paint the new um, center of gravity right there where it is. It's also got dragged a little bit uh, further forward. That's fine. But that's our new center of gravity. Now when I spawn it in the world, I have a kind of a visual representation. Now look at our boat. It's not tipping over. It's sitting nice. The water line is lower than I'd like. All right. That's, um, you know, that's not ideal. But as I, what was that? A dog just jumped in the water. Let's go rescue this dog. It'll be our first rescue before he drowns because I can't have that on my conscience. So we had a dog just jump in the water. So that was our first rescue. This dog, he's on our shoulders. I have to enable... Yeah, I know. He's he's barking. I hope he's not drowning. Could be drowning. I hope not. Don't need my heart broken on episode one. All right. Are you alive? Don't do it. What is his problem? This dog has issues here, man. All right. We'll take a minute to uh, save this dog here. He's already hurting because he was drowning. We're going to go lock him in our house. Don't have the, uh, this will be our first doggy, so. All right, so <laughs> let's, now that the, uh, let's get back on track here since we had a distraction. You know, so what I'm doing essentially is I'm overweight, overweighting the craft. And as I add an engine, the engine has a weight. Well, then I can delete some weight blocks. And so what I want to do is, is it possible for me to have the ship at at the water line that I want. If it's not, I need to redesign. And so I want to redesign as early as possible. Like some people will also start putting in 
decorations at the same time they're building. I don't like to do that because if it functionally is not going to work, I want to figure those functional items out first and then decorate. All right, so let's look at this. Um, it's sitting a little bit lower in the water than I would like. All right, and so what we're going to get is, so this deck, I want this deck here that we're going to walk on about a block or two above the water line. And that's going to keep us from getting this weird effect in game where water phases into the boat. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back in here, and we need to take out some weights. I'm actually just going to cut out this top section of weight blocks. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check if that is uh, 2,980 kilograms. If I uh, undo, that is uh, 4690, so that's over 2,000 kilograms. Of, that was over two tons of blocks in there. So let's see how it floats now. All right, so that's sitting more where I'd like it. Now we can actually go down a little bit lower. That's fine, which is good. So we're going to add things in like engines. You notice our stability is worse. That should be worse. All right, let's go ahead and jump in here. All right, so I'm also going to just look up some small tugboats to get some, a little bit of inspiration on the other monitor. Kind of just looking, seeing what we're looking at. I'll show you guys what I'm looking at here. So I just typed in small tugboats, and this gives me a little bit of inspiration. So we have something like this. That's a RC. That's not helpful. But you can see, like, here are some real working small tugboats. That's just the, was one for somebody to play with. But, you know, it's like, this is a small one here. You notice we don't have much of a, de of a rail on this one. This one has more rail. So these are, this is just kind of, kind of some inspiration. That's a big one. You know, we're building a real small one. And so this is kind of going to be our first vehicle. Just yeah. keeping some inspiration going there. All right, good. So we have this now somewhat weighted. And it, it's floating fine. It's working all right. And so the engines are going to go in towards the center. Um, so one of the big features of this particular one is going to be the azipods. And they're going to go right here, I think. What's that? Yeah, they have to go right there. Can I cut here? No, I can't. Okay, so they have to go right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do diesel electric. Diesel electric is not really super efficient, but um, actually, I'm trying to think. I think with this one, I will do diesel electric. And the reason I'm going to do this is with, with these here, with this robotic pivot power, I can do this and I can have engine power go through. I've been really kind of contemplating how I want to do this. I think I'm going to do diesel electric. And the reason is this is I would love to not do diesel electric, but I cannot put power through a velocity pivot. If we click on this and we look down, you notice we can put electric and power through. With this one, you notice we can only put electric through. I wish the devs would make a velocity pivot that allows you to have power go through. That would make um, azipods much, uh, much better. And let me I'll look up azipods so you guys... Who may not know what azipods are can learn what azipods are. So here are some azipods. And so it's actually, it's a pod where the engine is, or the propeller is, frankly. And they rotate. And so if you look here, that uh, pivot's there. You have some, you can see that pivot um, there. This is a, is a nice big one here. It has a big electric motor. It has... Um, Cables going through. This is why I'm doing mine as elect as diesel electric is. I want to be able to rotate these 360 degrees. And there's some really cool things that you can do with azipods. And this is why I'm doing it with azipods. Is here's a double azipod. the The reason I want to rotate them 360 degrees is you can do some really cool things with maneuverability. You can actually go sideways by putting one at a 45 degree, uh, you, could, you could put the two azipods um, at certain angles and have one forward, one reverse, and actually make the boat go sideways. And so it's really super cool. It aids in maneuverability. It adds some technical elements, which I like and I'm looking forward to. So we're gonna go do velocity pivots, and this will allow me to rotate my azipods in 360 degrees. And that's why I'm doing these electric, is so that I can rotate 360 degrees. And I actually want to, let's do this. I'm going to cause myself problems right off the bat, so I'm going to try not to. I'm going to take symmetry off, and I want these to rotate in the same direction, like so. And so I'm looking at my arrows. You see the filled arrow is now going the same way. All right, I'm going to build the Azpot. I need to make sure this is going to work. All right, so let's see. I need an electric motor. Yeah, I'm trying to think how I'm gonna, I I don't want this to look too ugly. So 
So that does isn't isn't ultra handsome, um, but it's gonna kind of have to be how it kind of has to be. And then props. So I'm I'm probably not gonna do mediums. Oh, not, where are we at here? Um, so let's go. We'll drag this up one here, and then. See, I can't put these next to each other this close anyway with it, with it like that. So let's. So I might do. I'm trying to think best way to do this. So I could do these azimuth thrusters like this, um, and then put a sing a couple electric motors. I'm trying to think the best way to do this. So let's do this. Let's go pipe. And I want an enclosed pipe, so I need to be able to do a T piece. Let's do a T piece corner enclosed. All right. And so thinking like that, let's go azimuth propeller like that. The problem is these are too close together. I really need these to be wider apart. And so it's kind of causing me problems. I can cheat this. Um, let's do this. Let's cheat it. I'll show you a trick. All right. Um, and part of the trick is because I don't actually have to have any power go through, I have to just have electricity, we can cheat this. And I, I might not need to, though. Let's try not to cheat it if I don't have to. So let's cut right here. Let's go ahead and put, uh, we want velocity pivot. Velocity pivots are the ones that rotate 360 degrees, and then we can use some PIDs to, um, to control their um, distance. So I needed these wider apart. That's why I did that. So let's go ahead and do a pipe again. This one here, TP's pipe enclosed. I don't want this to be too ugly. That's part of the issue is we have a little bit of a space constraint. But I need enough motor power on this to get a little bit of speed. So I, I want to play with this and see what I can do. The nice thing with this is I can test it with infinite electricity on, and that really um, saves me a bunch of headaches. All right, so I can put some smaller motor. Oh, i got to click on it, don't I? There we go. All right, so there are my two azipods. And so the nice thing with this is I can rotate them 360 degrees, um, and I can uh, power them like this, and that's kind of what I want. I've yet to do a 360 degree as a pod, and that's kind of what why I wanted to do this. And let's actually, what's how are we looking on? That's actually looking pretty good on length. That's not bad. I'm kind of digging that. That's looking all right. All right, so let's let's play with maneuverability here. Um, and so again, like I said, one nice thing with this is you can. You can operate these with um, infinite electricity on, so you don't have to build as much. And so part of this is the testing phase, make sure my vehicle is actually going to work for me. And then once I, once I know this is going to work, I can um, move on from there. All right, so let's go ahead and save this, and we'll make a backup. I highly recommend people do backups of their builds and then also save them. I, I save mine on an external hard drive. Uh, you see a lot of horror stories, people on Reddit and where else talking about how, you know, I lost my build, all my builds. And one way you can make sure that doesn't happen is by doing backups. All right, so let's go ahead and I want to load in the um, Mako. The Mako has a, uh, it's too big. What I did was I loaded in my test world. Test world is a creative save that has infinite money. And so what this allows me to do is like, all I want to do is load in the Mako. And I often um, recommend to people to build in your test world and then, um, you know, do your testing in your test world, then use the vehicle in your actual um, save. Makes it just a lot easier because you can you can teleport from base to base. Like for example, the base was too small for me to load this vehicle, and I all I want to do is check the microcontroller out, and I couldn't because you know I wasn't there. So let's go here, and this is the turret control. So I'm going to grab the turret control off of this. I'm going to copy it. So I highlighted it, copied it, 
And now I'm actually going to um, teleport. Again, we're in my test world, so this is nice. I can teleport to the beginner base. That's just going to make it super easy for me to be able to test this because it's not going to cost me any money. Um, you know, in your career save, you really you don't have a ton of money. You know, I, I couldn't just go buy another base to go do this super quick thing. You know, with my test world, I can. And I gotta fly up here. Again, this is why I turned on creative in this career series, too, is like the tedious elements of like if I had to run up here to buy this, that would be tedious. By being able to no clip, it cuts the tedium down and increases the fun time. And so that's important. So let's go ahead and in here, and I'm gonna load up the. I'm gonna load up our tug and should have that part right here. And so this is the turret control. And so what this allows me to do is use a velocity pivot, uh, have it go 360 degrees, and then also can command it 360 degrees, essentially. So turret X, turret Y. Let me check. So I, I really want one part of this is all I want. So let's go in and look in here. All right, so here's our PID. So we have our P value, our D value, our I value. We have um, from the turret. So that that actually we're gonna need the bigger we're gonna need the bigger um, yeah we're gonna need the bigger pivots I forgot we do need those so this is reading that and this is gonna read the number uh, that we want so okay so I need the bigger pivots and the reason is this this is another thing I wish the devs would would change is so right now I can't use these because um, if we look at our pivots. So you look at this here, it gives us rotation target. That that tells us that we're telling it where we want it to rotate to. And this is actually rotational speed and a velocity pivot. If we look over here, it tell we can give it a rotational speed, but it also tells us its current rotation. I wish they would add current rotation nodes, the small ones. All that does is it makes so that we have to build things bigger than we should. And so that's a little bit frustrating. Um, I don't know why the devs do that. So we're going to add these bigger ones back in here. Make sure symmetry's off. I meant to delete this one as well. There we go. All right, so what are we going to do is we're going back to the bigger pivots. Um, I just kind of have to because of I need to be able to read the current rotation of the pivots out. Now I'll show you a trick how to keep these watertight. And so this is kind of a neat trick. Um, so I put in these two bigger pivots here, all right? Now I want to join these up. All right. So if I go like this and put them here, I should have done symmetry like this. And we go to the merge. You'll notice the colors. All right. So those are, that's blue. That's green. If we go in the build, these aren't merged yet. Let's go ahead and merge them. So we'll merge them. Click on the yellow. Click to the blue. Now you notice it's blue. We'll click the yellow here. Click to the green, you'll notice it's green. So these are merged. All right, these are one part. Now what I can actually do is to make them watertight, I can delete that out. Now, if you notice, if I delete these blocks, let's look. Still green, still blue. I can put a block in there. Let's go symmetry on. I can put a block in there. Those are still connected. They don't look connected, but they're connected. All right, and so I'm going to go, I'm just going to do a rocket just because I want this to be circular. And I'm going to put it right here. And now those are still connected, even though we cut the connection. So that's a cool thing in Stormworks you can do that a lot of games you can't. I'm not a huge a fan of the way they look, but, you know, with the with the electric motors on there, but um, that's just how they're going to kind of look. It's not my favorite. Um, I'll see how much power I need, but um, that's currently how they're going to look. Again, I want them, these to function properly first. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get going here, crack -a all right, so let's look in here. And so what we need is we need the current rotation. Uh, what I'm going to do is just grab this like this. I'm going to copy the PID. I just have a microcontroller I call blank. And I want to make two of them. I want one for each azipod here. And I'm just going to swell these up. I'll, I'll copy over the other one here in a second. Um, so what do we need? We need a number input current rotation. We need a number output. That's going to be um, desired rotation. Okay. 
And then we need to take a composite input, a composite input that's from the seat. Okay. And so let's go ahead and we'll break this up. So this is our spawn point here where they spawn. I like to move these away from the spawn so that when we add a new node, it's not on top of our stuff and it makes it easier to find. All right, so the left one, we're going to work on the port as a pod now. So the port as a pod, I'm going to use AD to move the port as a pod, rotate it, and WS for power. All right, so what I want to do here is I want to do um, read a number. All right, now AD is rotation. AD is channel one. All right. And so I'm going to go paste the PID in here that I just copied from the other one here. Don't need this all the way over there. All right. And so the current rotation here is our process variable. Our desired rotation goes there. And then this will go out to desired rotation. So we're going to tell it where we want it to rotate. It's going to say, hey, this is where I'm currently rotated. It's going to compare them and then spit it out, essentially. All right, so let's update that. Let's go ahead and let's start hooking these things in. So this is going to be current rotation comes off of that. Uh, desired rotation goes to rotational speed. Composite's going to come off the seat. I want to configure AD. It's not going to be reset. It's going to be sticky. That's going to be uh, port as a pod rotation. Okay. And so let's uh, hook that up. Composite hooked up. And let's give it a test here. All right, so we want to turn infant electricity on. Infant electricity is on. And let's start rotating it. All right, so using AD. So as you can see, it will let me rotate it 360 degrees. It's super duper fast. So I just need to slow that down. But you, you notice I can rotate my azipod 360 degrees. All right. All right, so let's just slow it down. And so I'm going to do that with the sensitivity in the seat. So AD, right now it's at 10%. Let's go down to 1. I don't want this to be overly sensitive. Especially with a boat this small, it's going to wiggle waggle all over town if I do that. So that is probably way too slow. Okay, so see, it's um, that is way too slow. It's also backwards to where I like it. So let's see, we want that maybe three times the speed. So if we're at 1%, let's go to 3%. All right, now it's backwards. This is going to cause a little bit of a problem. So what I need to do is this will take us a little bit of work to fix, but it's worth doing it now. So you see how the solid is on this side and the this is on. Actually, let's do it in the microcontroller. I don't want to flip those around. It's too much work at this point. So what we'll do is here is the 1. Um, we'll take a function. Do a negative x, negative x. Actually, we could just do it here. Let's just do it here. Negative x, it doesn't really matter, but we're going to put it here. Uh, let's do it right here. Negative x and negative x, and that will now make that um, inverted. All right, good. And so now we did the sensitivity up to 3%, so it's three times as sensitive. It should move three times as fast. Let's look at it. All right. As you can see, that's moving faster now. It's moving the way I want it. All right, good. So that's that all set. So now what I want to do is I'm going to copy this one here. We'll do copy. We'll move it over here. Merge it there. Let's hook this all up. So we want to do seat. Uh, we want to do uh, rotational speed. We want current rotation. And what we're going to do is we're going to configure this a little bit differently, though. So I'm going to do now... Um, where are we at here? Uh, we have up, down, left, right. So left, right is going to be the is going to be the starboard as a pod rotation. That's going to be starboard as a pod rotation. Sticky. It's going to be three percent. All right, good. Now WS is going to be uh, port rust. Okay. Um, sensitivity will leave at ten percent. Up, down is going to be starboard. Rust. We don't want it as um, reset. We want it sticky. We want that as sticky as well. And we're going to go 0 to 1. The net, when you have an azipod that rotates 360 degrees, you don't need to go in reverse. You actually move the azipod facing the opposite way. So we're only going to go 0 to 1 um, on that. 
And so next thing we want to do here is we want our thrust. So I'm going to add that on here. So we have a spot. So let's go uh, number output rust. All right. And so this is going to be our thrust. It spawns up here, as you can see. And so for this one, this one is starboard, I believe. So starboard, we need to configure. So we're going to be doing left, right. So left, right is three. Um, and then we want to do um, up, down is four. So that'll be four. And what we want to do is we want to put a clamp in there. And so I only want this to be able to go uh, forwards. So it's going to be zero to one. And that's going to hook in the thrust. And so that'll read our thrust out. This is going to be zero to one on our thrust. All right. And I'm actually just going to do this, copy that. I'm going to go and This will actually be quicker in the long run just to redo it. So that is going to be desired rotation. That's going to be current rotation. That's going to be thrust. Thrust is going to go to our three motors. Hook thrust up to our three motors here. We also need to hook the composite back up. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to reconfigure my numbers. So AD is 1 and WS is 2. So that should give us um, control now. Let's go ahead and update this. And once we have this moving, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll end the first episode there. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to start pushing up uh, W and up at the same time. All right, we'll start moving. And so when you have these azipods, you just steer with one azipod. So I tend to steer with the port azipod. So you don't need to move both of them. You can just move the... Um, the one as a pod. So as you can see, I'm just steering with my port as a pod. Now, um, this boat might get wider. Um, I'm already looking at kind of stability. I'm probably going to cut the gunnel down, that rail. It doesn't need to be up as high. You notice a lot of those tugboats I showed you, especially the small ones, they didn't have very big rails. This has bigger rails than I'd like to have on it. So that'll probably be uh, shrunk a little bit. All right, so let me show you kind of some of the cool things you can do with as a pods. So I'm going to bring them all the way down. And we'll go to zero. All right, so one of the things you can do is you can go sideways, which is a really cool feature of Azipods. And so I'm trying to think of how we do this. Um, so if we go 45 degrees on this Azipod here, um, that's going to uh, – we're going to go left. We're going to translate left. So we're going to push that one up. That's going to try to push the vessel to the left, but it's also going to turn the stern. So what we want to do is counteract that by moving this one 45 degrees in the opposite direction. So they should both be 45 degrees. I want to match them up. I should have put a dial. And so they're both going to go forward. So now we're going to start adding them in. And so I'm going to start steering with one of them here. So I tend to, I think 45 is too much. I remember before when I was doing this. Um, there we go. All right, we're starting to go sideways now. I'm just working with the thrust. I'm playing with the thrust, playing with the angle. Up, up, whoa, whoa, whoa. Very, it's sensitivity is way too high. All right, there we go. That's just kind of proof of concept. You notice we're moving sideways. My bigger ASD tug, you know, I already have this set up. Um, let me quickly bring this back in the workbench. This is going to require a bunch of tuning. This is too much power, so let me do this really quick. We'll keep going for a couple minutes here. Let's do this. Um... We might be able to get away with having one motor. I'd like that. It's already moving pretty fast. Uh, the more motors we have, um, the more power we're going to need. So we might go with one to start with anyway. Let's test this out with one motor, see how we do. I think that might be enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
Again, this doesn't need to be super duper fast. All right, so let's go to zero these out. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and put some dials in. This will help me see where we're at. So two of them are going to be for the azipods, and then two of them are going to be for the thrusts. And so what I'm going to read is current rotations here. And then I'm going to read the um, want WS here. And then I went up down here. All right, and let's go ahead and uh, we'll play with this just for a second, then we'll go. My, I already have an ASD tug that um, articulated stern drives that ASD stands for. Um, couldn't find the chart that shows you how to set them up, but um, try to remember it a little bit, you know. Um, so, I, oh, I know, I know how I have to do them now. Okay, so, you know, the problem is with my other one, I don't, they don't go 360 degrees, so I have to put one in forward, one in reverse. With these, they will always go in forward, and so I was just trying to remember how to set them up here. All right, so I should be able to translate this now. Translate, I mean, go sideways. And so let's read our gauges. So you can see I can kind of read the angle of the azipod here and the thrust. So let's go ahead and let's um, bring our thrust all the way down. All right, so we'll, we'll go sideways here. And so what we want to do is I want to push out the starboard azipod to... 45 degrees generally where you do it. Um, in game, 25 was working better for me. Um, it was too much in game to go to 45, so we'll go 25 there. And then what I want to do is, so this one, yeah, 25 is not where I want it. Um, one half of, half of that's 12.5. Let's go there. So let's go. So let's do about 12 there. So that's 45 degrees right there. So what that's going to do is that's going to we're going to push with that one. So that's going to try to push us left, but it's also going to try to turn our stern and move our bow to the right. And so we, we need to counteract that. So I'm actually going to push this one like this, so that's 45 degrees pointing this way. And so I'm going to look at my number here, and so that should be about was it 48? I think yeah, 48. So that's at point four. Oh nope. All right, so something like that. So what this one's going to do is also be in forward. So this one is going to push. Um, that's going to counteract the bow turning right, but it's also going to help us push right. So let's just add a tiny bit of uh, thrust here. I'm going to try to gently add in thrust here. Where are we at? Point four point. So that's a... I'm just kind of looking at my thrust here. I need to get these thrusted up here. All right, see, the problem is these are super powerful at the moment, so. Once I get the... I'll get the, you know, I'll screw with these a little bit more. There we go. We're starting to get there. It's a little bit different in game than it is in real life. You know, I, I do have this working on another azipod. This is the first time I've done the 360 degrees, so that's going to take me some playing with to get these um, tooled in right. Here we go. We're starting to get there. All right, so see how we're starting to go sideways here? There we go. So see us going sideways? We're going a little bit backwards, which means I need more thrust on that um, rear one. Now we need to go um, opposite direction. But you see I can move sideways by doing different angles with these thrusts. It's a little bit complicated, but it's not bad. Um, all right, let's bring them all the way back. Let me do one maneuver to the right, and then we'll call it a video. But this is going to be a cool little thing. Um, I, it's kind of nice to build some small vehicles again. Um, it's just going to take the time to build them down a little bit. be nice to get back into some early missions again. So let's go ahead, and we're going to reverse these. So this one here on the... Um, on the port side is gonna is gonna now go this direction. All right, and I hit the stop. With the way these are behaving, I might just go back to the way I had them on the Damon two one one. Let me quickly show you that and how this operates. The three hundred sixty degrees, how they work in real life. I think they're gonna be a pain in game to make work right. Um, so let's do this. 
Let's go back to the other base. I will show you how the Damon 2111, which, you know, I've put a lot of hours into that. It works well. Um, so that is also an ASD tug, articulated stern drive. This one, it does not rotate 360 degrees. But I'll show you how this one functions. This one functions really well. This is like, kind of like my premier tugboat. Right, I'll take off infinite electricity. I don't need it. All right, so let's get uh, started up here. I have to actually go down here in the bowels of the ship and get this started. All right, so now we're, our systems are all set up. So this one works. It's direct drive, um, which is the most efficient in game, uh, but they cannot go 360 degrees, so I have to um, operate them differently. All right, so we're going to desync our azopods. Uh, this one, they only go... Um, they don't go 360 degrees. So what I have to do is... Let me try to remember how to turn these... So these will go 45 degrees. So I actually have good visual representation. So I'm going to go to, so right there is, is 45. Let's actually not go 45. Let's go a little bit less right there. So these you can see are already set up. So this is ultimately what I'm trying to get to. I might just do this the way I have it on this. So as you can see, that's negative, that's 0.6. So these are synced up. What I want to do is I want to go forward with my um, starboard one and rearward on my other one. So, and so see how the tugboat goes sideways. Notice how it's moving sideways. Now we're coming backwards a little bit. So the one that's in reverse, I just need to gently tap up a little bit, and I can also steer it a little bit as I need to. So I can steer it to go the direction I want. So as you can see, I'm going sideways with having two props in the rear because I can angle them like that. So that's ultimately like what I'd like to get to with that little tugboat. Um, this one, I think I'm going to go back to this system of just having them both go forward. I think that's a better system. And so you see how I can very quickly start driving again. Say I want to go forward. I just move that, doing the port one to get going here. And so I can go from sideways to forwards pretty quickly. Do all sorts of things like rotations and everything else. So that's kind of what I'm looking to do. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy that, uh, the new start of the Career Build Series, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.